I design a new mission to Moho, class is dismissed at Kerbin Station, and Jebediah decides he'd rather fly the box he came in. All of this and more coming up right now. Hello everyone and welcome. Just looking at what is coming up here next. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I got 337 science. Well, let's check out the research and development. That is another node. Now, are there any of these that I want to wait on? Valkyries, cone intakes, engine pre-coolers, whiplashes and toroidals, place plane, country, this is a distinct possibility because we're getting into space plane country here. The other one I was considering. So I got this idiot contract to make a relay satellite. And the antenna strength has to be something like 500 G's, which would be still quite a number of these antennas, even though these are the biggest ones. I'd love to get that contract out of the queue. Oh, a radiation detox unit can be added to... Okay, that's cool. Sometimes you don't ignore these slot upgrades. Oh, I think I am going to save my cash. And I'm aiming at this guy, Advanced Science Tech. It does give you the gravioli. There's a lot more science that gets unlocked. Yeah, I think I'm going to save my science for this one. But... What I'm looking at is building something to go to Moho. I got a Moho window coming up in 27 days. I do have some contracts. All my Delta V numbers are here. I can build some. This is going to be a direct to Moho. No idiot flyby eaves or anything like that. Straight up going to Moho. Let's see what we can do. So let's go through the contracts here. Moho 1. All right, so here are the two contracts we got. One is the Orbit Moho, which I've had for a long time. I got the Carriner 2 on its way to Moho. Um, it's in a resonance orbit with Moho. It's still a long way from getting there. I'm very likely that this craft is going to beat it there. So the main objective, so it's probably going to get this contract all before the Carriner 2 ever gets there, which is fine. I'll still fiddle with the Carriner 2 to see if I can get it there. But that's a long way in the future. But what I'm looking at is something high-res altimetry scan of MOHO, uh, resource scan, high resolution of MOHO, and a high-res, so you gotta put everything. That's a lot of crap. Okay, let's get started. This is gonna be a big boy. So we're gonna start with my best pro body I got so far, which is the Octo 2. And let's get the science out that we need, because it's gonna be a lot. We gotta put on one of these. And a high resolution altimetry scan. Yeah, I, I, it won't stay that way. And the high resolution resource scanner, which is this fella. So all of this stuff, which has a quite a lot of mass, has to get itself to Moho and actually be organized in some sort of comprehensive way. Let's get some structural bits. Sure. What do we got for robotic parts? Still kind of big, isn't it? Why do these all have to be as big as they are? Why can't they have small ones? I'm not so sure it fully retract it is. Poop. Alright, so much for that idea. Let's take a look at the orbit ranges. Because I think this one's best at 350, but can go all the way down to 70 kilometers. This one's best at 250, can all go all the way down to 70 kilometers. And all the way up to 500. And this one's best at 250, can go all the way up to 500. Oh, let's split the difference. We'll put it into a 300 kilometer orbit. Split the difference between the two bests. Oh, we gotta think about antennas. Let's think about antennas. I want to think about bandwidth because I some of these generate a frack ton of data. So that is 15G, that one's 15G, which one has, and this one has the better, this one's lighter too. Okay, so that is my best direct antenna 
It is a 15 gigameter antenna and that gives me 75% signal strength with Moho when it's at its maximum separation. And that's adequate, that's fine. I don't think it's worth it going to two antennas. I'll stick with just the one. Now it's time to start thinking about electrical demands. Thankfully Kerbalism gives us this great menu down here. What is our electrical consumption right now? We are using up 5.215 units of electric charge. And based on that and wanting to have an orbit with an altitude of 300 kilometers, my electrical storage needs are going to be around 5,000 units of electric charge. I do now have these guys. A thousand each. That's just for batteries. And electrical generation shouldn't need much because the inverse square law is going to be my friend. If I take into account both my consumption rate and recharging when coming out of the night side, I need about 6.5 units of electric charge per second for generation. But because of our proximity to the sun when we're down there around Moho, that translates to just about 1.4 units of electrical generation. And by my calculations, this should be enough. And I like this. I like it a lot. I like the look of a pile of oxats just doing around the perimeter of the craft. Oh, well, hang on. I still got a lot of other science I can add on to this thing. I have very little science around Moho. So uh, let's go through and see what else we can add on here. And I actually added on a second probe body so I can get four of those Kerbalism experiments that you can put in the probe bodies. I got the telemetry report, the light experiment, the mite experiment, and the sight experiment, as well as Kerbalism's Geiger counter and the stock thermometer and magnetometer. All that though did increase my electrical generation needs which could be served by just adding on another row of these oxats. And then I needed 500 more units of electric charge to survive the night. But of course, we still gotta get all of this to Moho. So it's time to take a look at the Delta V numbers that the Transfer Window Planner mod provides us. Our ejection Delta V is 2558. And our capture Delta V, really? 1,000? That seems really unreasonable. I'm gonna go with more than that. That, that insertion, it, there's no way you get a capture around Moho for only about 2,000 meters per second. That just feels wrong, but the total here is 4,472. I'm gonna go with at least 5 kilometers per second at Delta Vipo. And I ended up with this. It's got 5,397 meters of Delta V. I mean, it should be enough. I guess it'll be a while until we find out though. You can also see I switched out the solar panels, although all those oxats did work for as far as the generation that was required. Uh, when I added up their mass, it was way cheaper just to go with a couple of deployable solar panels. Even though they generate way more electricity than I need once I get in around Moho. Final mass of all of this was about 15 tons once I added on this fairing. Of course, the next step in all of this is to get this thing into a low carbon orbit, and that's going to require a booster. And I did have an old booster that on paper should be able to do the job. In fact, this is the booster that actually lifted all of my Kripalo missions back in the early episodes of Season 2. I don't know, it just didn't look right, and it's old tech, and I got new engines. It's, it's time to start retiring these old boosters, so instead, I decided to go new. I had an upper stage that was being pushed by the Bobcat engine, and then with the lower stage, I started off my new Kerbidine KE-1 Mastodon liquid fuel engines with its launch thrust of 1350 kilonewtons. This all together, it's time to give it its first test flight. Oh, we are a wobbly mess. <laughs> what the hell is happening up here? It's right around here it was wobbling. Let's chuck in a few struts. See what that does for the situation. Oh, that's still pretty wonky. Ah. Oh, the script called an abort. All right, auto strut time. We'll remove the struts that I just put in and then we'll just auto strut right down the whole stack. I'm always sort of hesitant using the auto struts. It feels 
a little bit cheaty. I kind of wish that there was maybe a slight mass penalty when you use auto struts, but then again with these KSP rockets, I think it gets to a point once they get big enough that it becomes pretty much a necessity. Alright, let's see how this one does. Auto strut is an amazing thing. Gosh, this motor's quiet. <laughs> That's like the quietest motor ever. This is the Mastodon on the bottom there, and it's hardly making a sound. It's the stealth rocket. But the stealth rocket did do its job and got the upper stage well into the upper atmosphere, though by the time that upper stage engine cut off, we we're still lower in the upper atmosphere than what I would like, which means we spent a bit of time dragging ourselves through the upper atmosphere. And although it had plenty of Delta V still to be able to make the orbit, it kind of bugged me. Now I got two ways to fix this. Number one is to write a better launch script that can dynamically change the thrust on that upper stage booster and recognize that this situation was coming up or I can simply just add more thrust on the bottom end. <laughs> you, you know what I did. I, I, I switched out the Mastodon engine for the more powerful mainsail engine and also spent a little bit of time dressing this up. And not only did this thing get up into orbit, it now sounds like a rocket. <laughs> I didn't like the silent Mastodon anyway. I'm not quite sure what was going on with that. So this thing pretty much performed as I would want it to do. It's going to take 14 days to build, so it'll be comfortably built before I get to my MOHO window. And we'll see it launch when that MOHO window comes up in a future episode. I also decided that this booster was definitely going to be a keeper. So we named it the Mainsail 1-B1, and it's capable of taking 17.3 tons into low carbon orbit, so this should be a useful booster for me in the future. But you know what? That's all way too much time to be spending in the VAB. Let's get to an actual mission. Alright, so we are here on Kerbin Station. Uh, I have one day and just under two hours left on my Hold a Space Camp. Uh, just for those <laughs> that are new that might not recall is this is to bring up 16 tourists They are all in here believe it or not here. Let's I can start scrolling through here. They're all up here. They're up here with uh, Some teaching staff the teaching staff is Valentina Bob is up here and Kerberi's up here. There we go. So Valentina, Kerberi, Lagerford's not part of the teaching staff. He's just freeloading here. But in an, just under an hour, one day and two hours, um, we have to get all of these tourists back down. And some of them apparently, I think, will join our Kerbinot core. Now, one thing is that the hinges on these variable geometry space planes that I have built are getting sketchier and sketchier. Uh, you can see how they're kind of leaving them. I don't know if that's going to affect the performance. I don't know if that's just an aesthetic thing. I'm a little bit worried. So what the plan is, is I need to bring up a whole army of pilots to be able to fly these people down. And it's going to take four flights because I can fit six people in here, but there's going to have to be a pilot. So that means they can take five passengers there are 16 tourists that have to come down. It doesn't quite work out to three each. You know, there has to be, there's going to be four to a ship. But I think what's going to be the first plan, there should be five of these up here. Oh, no, there's four. Well, one's coming up. <laughs> the first plan is I'm going to bring up Jebediah with some other people. And I'm going to make the first flight down just Jebediah. He's going to take the sketchiest looking one of these and he's going to take it down. Uh, the advantage that Jebediah has is that Jebediah could bail out. I'm hoping that that will be okay, that he can bail out and parachute down to the surface. The problem with tourists is, is tourists can't EVA, so that means they can't bail. So if your spacecraft completely loses control, then um, yeah, they're kind of done. If Jeb can't bring it down to the surface safely, I'm going to have to figure out an alternate way to get all these people back down. I do have uh, more primitive standard type of crafts that just use parachutes to come down. That's the 
Palm 1B, I believe, is the craft. It's been a while since... I guess I could just send up a bunch of those. Um, I'd rather not. I might need to... I'm really thinking... Is once we get these down, is to redesign these without the hinges. Just have fixed wings and, and call it a day. I don't think that will be too much work to do. I gotta say, I'm kind of impressed. Usually I find in the past that these contracts that require you to do something for a certain period of time kind of get muffed up um this one did not so good on you uh tourism plus that is the contract pack that provided this one 49 seconds oh we are done okay so now what we need to do is to bring all of our tourists back so uh, let's let's get down to the space center launch our first puff All right, and here we go with flight number one. So this is the Puff Mark One with its its brand new booster. Actually, you did s sort of see this booster because I used one of these to do that orbital rescue or orbital rescue orbital repairs a couple of episodes ago, where I had a couple of kickback solid fuel boosters so it could go into its core orbit to prepare a satellite. But uh, right now, this is really the main thing. It's a single stage with a bore liquid fuel engine here on the bottom and then the upper stage is being pushed by a swivel just a little swivel engine to do the top part you can see for our crew we got Jebediah because as I already mentioned Jebediah is going to be our well the only pick we could have made to brave one of those sketchy puffs and bring it back down to the surface also along is another pilot Colonel Valley I got two more pilots to come up. They're going to come up in a flight number two. And also, we got here a tourist named Kamsi. But Kamsi's actually not a tourist. Kamsi is a mission payload specialist. Uh, we need to bring a payload specialist to curb and station because apparently our airlock is malfunctioning. Uh, we just got to bring him up there for seven days and he's going to repair the airlock. And that finishes off this contract. This is coming from, I believe, it's Stations and Bases Plus. Maybe, or something like that. <laughs> but um, I like this contract. It's nice. So he'll go up there. He'll stay up. He's just along for the ride. And there's going to be a flight two, and that's going to bring up the rest of my pilots. Uh, once Jebediah has safely demonstrated that this thing can come down without too much drama. And I have brought these things down twice so far. Um, in one, I came a little bit short of the runway. I hope to do a little bit better this time. The other one, we're coming down from a polar orbit, so getting to the runway was uh, a sketchy proposition at best. But in both of those circumstances, it descended through the atmosphere fine. It slowed down fine. I was in complete control when I just got down to the bottom. I just uh, wasn't piloting my glider very well. We've got a contract complete for our high-resolution visual scan of Kerbin. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. Uh, kind of busy right now. Otherwise, I would probably... Well, we're a couple of minutes away. Let's take a look at the map. And change the map type to visual. What's this look like? Uh, the contract gets complete when it's 75% of the way done. That looks 75% of the way done. Can turn off some of these orbital overlays. Where is that? This one? It's all messy. There we go. Very, very nice. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Let's 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 get back to the uh, topic at hand, though. <laughs> I can see the purple docking port on the nav bolts right there. Let's probably start moving in a little close. Yeah, we can start coming in towards it now. Progray, there we go. We're all set up. Well done, Jebediah. Well, maybe I shouldn't jinx it. Not well done yet, but I think we're <laughs> I think we're doing well. Coming in very cautiously and slowly. The playback, by the way, is at one and a half speed to overcome the frame rate issues all the parts that are on screen are creating right now. Beautiful. As it takes forever to decide to dock. Okay, we're there. 
things now. Oh, let's take a look at our contract. We got our mission specialist. Oh, we got to recover him. So he's got to stay up here for seven days. That's cool. I should put that into an alarm. So again, this whole thing is to get Jebediah into our most sketchy looking plane. It's going to be, well, they're all sketchy looking, aren't they? <laughs> so he's going to do this one solo. Actually, before we get into any of this stuff, might as well roll out another puff. So we got to change launch pads. Launch pad number two, roll out another puff. That will take an hour. By then, Jebediah will be down on the ground one way or the other. <laughs> Let's toggle on the reaction wheels first. There we go. Got a little bit of torque there because of these thruster blocks being way off the center of mass. Let's try that again. So let's see if, we, <laughs> if these hinges still work. Notice that they're locked. So we'll take the lock off. Oh, now it's going. I really got to stop using robotic parts for mission critical stuff. It must be really hard. I remember playing with Inferno Robotics and it had often many of these same sort of issues. You just real robotics parts are fun, but <laughs> oh my gosh, but you really can't trust them. Not at all. Okay, let's uh there I like to start my descent right about there, so let's get over there. I always like to start from the same spot. Now, I have received some comments here, let's stop a little bit before regarding trajectories that there's a target icon here and yeah let's Kerbin KSC let's set that as a target now what does that do for me show the trajectory my descent will be in a prograde direction of an angle of attack at the beginning of about 45 degrees during the high atmosphere I don't know will be 30 degree 30 degrees and we'll final approach will be at zero I'm not sure what the target does for you. Gives you some data. Oh, I can see a little green cross there. Let's see what this does. So we're going to, right about there, we're gonna turn this to retrograde and we're just gonna start burning here and see what this gives us. So I have botched this re-entry a couple of times so far. The first time I completely forgot that I had the trajectories mod. So I'd really like to see if we can put this right on the runway. Now that puts a pair, see that's, oh, we're going, okay, no, 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 you <laughs> see what's happening? We're going around once and then coming, that's not what I want, so let's burn a little more. This is making more sense. Oh, we're having electricity issues, but we are gonna come into the, oh, not so, oh, wait a minute, this one might have the re water recycler on, that might be what's going on, let's check this out. Okay, this is making sense. So, stop. There we go. 38 kilometers on the periapsis. That seems kind of reasonable. Okay, let's, uh, we have lost. Do we have enough for attitude control? No. Uh, we're going to put on, ah, poopy poop. I think I know what the problem is, but let's fix this first. So we're going to put on yaw pitch roll. That's giving us one thruster block. <laughs> Oh dear, dear, dear. Let's just turn that off. Yaw, pitch, and roll. Okay, turn the RCS off. It's just wasting monopropellant. Where are my other thrust blocks? They're at the end of the wings. Yaw, pitch, and roll. Yaw, pitch, and roll. Okay, now let's put this on the normal vector. RCS on. Okay, I have these turned off because, you know, when you're docking and you have electricity, I'll spin this around. See, this uses a lot of monopropellant. And as long as I don't have a dorky, stupid situation like running out of electricity, there we go. We got our electricity back. We don't need that. But sometimes on the descent, it's nice to have the RCS to hold out attitude because the reaction wheels have trouble keeping up. I suspect what's going on here. Yes, we got a water recycle because this is one of my old ones. 
pressure control and scrubber. The water recycler takes a lot of electricity. I have removed it from the newer puffs, but this is one of the older ones, obviously from its gimpy wings. All right, Jeb, we're doing this thing. Let's do it. So, this will charge up our batteries. Not a huge amount. We got, oh, oh, we are here. Okay, let's orient ourselves. Prograde. Blue up. Blue up. <laughs> there we go. And pitch of 45 degrees. Oh, look at that. Okay, I'm going to, uh, let's put the view on free because I find this easier. But there is a little, this, okay, that is interesting. There is this little green icon on the nav ball. I'm hoping everybody can see that all right. I'm assuming that's where they want you to put the ship or maybe the red one's where you put the ship. I don't know. I'm gonna put it on the red one. And this is giving me distance to target and stuff like that. South 1.7 kilometers, east 2.3 kilometers and now the east is going up so I've got a feeling that's not good. I wanna go due east. Oh no, that makes sense that the east is... Wait a minute, let me make sense of this. No, now the total distance is 2.91 kilometers. 1.69 kilometers to the south. No, it's the south I want to bring down, that's right, and 2.5 kilometers to the east. If I put it on the red icon, does that start bringing... The east distance is going up. How can I be getting, I gotta be getting closer. There's no way actually, no, this is how far maybe its projection is from the target. It has to be, because there's no way I'm 4.7. So this is making things worse. That makes things better. Ooh, look at that. Oh, this make, might, might make my life a lot easier. Still coming a little bit to the south of it. I think this is predicting where, where it's prediction. How far is the prediction from? Okay, let's not get too obsessed by that. I also have to look at heating. And we got silly wings. <laughs> Don't forget about your silly wings. Okay, pitch down. No, that's bad. Pitch up. Yep. Okay, the, we are right on for the west. Like the east-west direction. Pitch down. What we need to do, maybe just roll it a little bit. Oh, now we've over. That's worse. Pitch down, pitch down, pitch down. No, oh, pitch up, pitch up, pitch up, pitch up, pitch up. I gotta watch. I gotta watch my heating too. Okay, that's bringing the west number down. I think that means we were overshooting there for a bit. We we're coming. No, we we're undershoot. No, it must mean we're overshooting. Ah! Yes, we're. Because if I pitch up this, I don't know. It looks like we're coming a little to the south, but only by a kilometer. That's easily rectifiable once we, once we get some good atmosphere going. Okay, pitch down. Maybe the green one is where you're. They're saying you should put it. Little green icon on the nav ball. Of course, I could always visit their. <laughs> I could always visit the for the forums for trajectories and read the documentation. There's a thought. Reading documentation. What a thought. Okay. Oh, this is working really. I'm going to just keep following that green one. I, I got to look at one thing at a time. I do want to make sure nothing blows up or breaks down or anything. But as stupid as this thing looks, it does seem to be behaving okay. And that's good. Batteries are almost empty. And the problem is when the batteries are empty, Ah, uh, that's the problem I ran into before. When the batteries are empty, I use... I lose... Okay, I gotta... I gotta turn off... I gotta turn off SAS. That's what happens. I gotta consume... Oh, gosh darn it. Okay, maybe turning off SAS... Ah! I'm just gonna let it go like this for a little bit. Um, I'm not going for the runway. The problem is when electric charge runs out, you no longer have reaction wheels, and reaction wheels are one of the primary means of attitude control on this thing, so I'm conserving 
electricity, conserving electricity, not doing a very good job. Let's see, what can we turn off? Scrubber, pressure control, we don't need anymore. Turn off the lights. <laughs> We're using up a lot of electricity. I'm not 100% sure why. Uh, pressure. Why are there multiple? Pr oh my gosh, there's a water. There's a water recycler in there too. That was the issue. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, okay. I might, I might have gotten that fixed now. There was a water recycler in the crew cabin. Okay, now we're hardly using up any electricity. Okay, we're just going for the water. Uh, forget everything else. Clear this target. Turn that off. Get rid of you. We're just going for the water again. Okay, we should be good. Let's pull up. I think we were doing good for the runway, except for the fact that we ran out of electricity because there was another water recycler. Let's turn on SAS again. There was another water recycler in the crew cabin back here that was running. All right, so these old ones are all borked. I'm still running out of electricity. Jeb, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. Okay, we got lots of attitude to, okay. SAS on, I gotta pull out of this dive, obviously. Come on, up, 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 up. Come on, Jeb. Oh my gosh, I left this pretty late. <laughs> I think the plane is for, is performing fine. It's that electricity. Okay, we're here. I think we can get this down now. Yeah. Look at the electric charge bar, though. Like, oh my gosh. Okay, let's just get down in the water, Jeb. You did it. Power starved vehicle, but ah, there we go. We survive. <laughs> okay. 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 We're good, we're good. We are not recovering this into the spade. We're just doing a normal recovery that is never coming back again. All right, it is time for another one, <laughs> round two, but this one's gonna put all of my pilots, obviously, except for Jebediah, uh, up onto the station. Um, I hope I got this worked out right. So I got two pilots on here. We got Verbri and Colonel Themon. They're the last of my pilots. Hados, of course, is not a pilot. Hados is a scientist. Hados is up there because I've got a contract for Lagerford to do a flyby of the moon, and Hados is going to be part of that crew. You know, I keep managing all the electricity type items by right clicking on parts, but honestly, Kerbalism gives you. Oh, we're right on it right now, aren't we? Yes, we are. This great where it shows all the devices and you can just turn things on and off from here. So like from here, I can see I do not have, because I removed them, uh, any of the water recyclers. I got pressure control running in both cabins and I got a scrubber um, running. I don't know why they have a TV. That could be probably removed as well. There's a TV in the crew cabin. Actually, why not? Why not? They have an in-flight movie that they can watch. <laughs> and boom. All right. 22, 24. There are 26 Kerbals on this station right now. That is berserk. Students. So we can put, we're going to put four students in here with uh, Verbri. So let's see. Are there students in this one? Uh, nope, nope. That's the faculty lounge. <laughs> there we go. So Natafen. We're going to do this whole module. Natafen and Melfred, and desktop. Almost desktop, but he's desktop. Just gone into the dark, so I'm not gonna land in the dark, so we're gonna time warp a few hours here. Oh, uh, oh, Maxwell 4 SOI change. Okay, 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 yeah, we kinda gotta deal with that, don't we? Okay, that's the, or Maxwell 6, I'm losing track of my Roman numerals there. Maxwell 6 uh, is a mapping satellite on its way to Minmus. It's going to be a while. We, we, we'll be able to get Verbri down. It set up our capture burn. But that burn is not for 2 hours and 36 minutes, so but that gives us plenty of time to get back to Kerbin Station. So let's do that right 
now? You know, it's interesting. Um, notice the rotation that induced, you know, because I didn't have SAS on, but I think the games does see these wings as being physically out here. They just somehow are still connected to the craft, which is kind of comical. Let's deal with electricity before we get any further here. So pressure control, oh no, pressure control on, scrubbers on. I don't need both scrubbers for goodness sakes. Water recyclers off, that's what's killing me. Turn off the TV, fellas. All right, we should be good now. We are slowly working out all bugs in this, very slowly. Trajectories, okay. Target, Kerbal Space Center, or Descent, it's prograde. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That should be good. You notice all my numbers are still here. I'm watching that east number. We're still a little undershooting according to this, but we are slowing down very nicely. Let's just do that right now. Put this on chase. doesn't feel like I'm under like I feel like I'm coming too high I feel like I need to drop okay I'm not trusting the numbers anymore I'm sorry Let's stall 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 pitching up and stalling electric charge is still an issue okay Okay, let's, I don't know what, this is, I feel like I'm so high. Let's do the upside down maneuver. But I'm also watching electric charge here. This thing really has, oh yeah, these things don't have the batteries on them either. That's the other issue. I, I up the batteries on them. These things have no batteries. The only batteries are in the, uh... oh, these are sketchy machines. Okay, here we go. I like this. I like this. The straight out plummet. Not looking at trajectories anymore. Turn that off. Get rid of you. Okay. I am watching electricity. I think they're expecting you to have a really crappy glider like a real life space shuttle. This is more like the, with the spaceship, but this thing's not a bad glider, so I don't need to come down this steep. Okay, gear. I think this is looking pretty good. I'm watching my speed. I don't want it to get too slow. This thing is light, so it gets... Yeah, I am actually might, believe it or not, be coming short. Come on. Carry that over. Oh, wait. Put this on terrain. There we go. Right here at the end. Ah! Oh, we're there. We're there. We're there. We're there. We're there. Light breaks. Light breaks. Got a little bit of bouncy, bouncy happening. Okay, we're down on the runway. Down. Tour safe. <laughs> First batch of tour safe. <laughs> the wings are like dragging on the ground. <laughs> oh, it was a little bit wonky, but it it got down. And again, I'm bringing down the worst ones first. I redesigned this. It is a Okay, it, whatever. Let's recover this. Again, normal recovery. Definitely not reusing this vessel. All right. Four down. Twelve to go. Okay, let's do that. Um, Just take a quick look at alarm clock here. Maxwell 6 is still an hour and 41 minutes away, so we can definitely get people down before that. All right, we got one down on the runway. Can we make it two in a row? You know, this... Oh, yeah, prograde. This actually is more the way I think. Oh, these numbers are, weren't in. Look at that. That's how this got screwed up. Oh, even though the number... Okay, my fault. My bad. 45. Now tab. This is what happened last time. 30. Tab. There we go. That's what happened last time. I had the numbers in here, but the sliders weren't in the right position. That's why that last descent was so wacky. Okay, okay. Okay, this one should be better. I knew something didn't feel right. Now, that little icon seems to be in the right spot. 
we need to roll it just a little bit. I think this is kind of like the target icon for the what you're going. So I need to, I'm going to roll a little bit to the north to kind of pull this thing because it says again we're a little bit to the south. I really do think that it is factoring in the lift from these wings in the position that they're in. So I think that's this thing is kind of wonky. It's kind of wonky. We are really overshooting. Let's do the that maneuver. If I'm when I'm overshooting, I can I don't know what it is, I can just do it better this way. Electric charge is okay. And all of this electric charge business is fixed in the newer puffs that have gone up. So the two newer ones that are up there are fine, and it's all the old ones that I sent up that are really the problem. All right, we got this. I'm gonna come in it from the other side, but we got this. I'm st I gotta get on the trajectories for them, find out exactly what these icons are about. There's no way I should have my vessel pointing here, but maybe it's saying I should have the vessel pointing there. No, that still doesn't really make sense. Okay, whoa, 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 don't lose speed here, dude. Don't lose speed. I can get an actual sudden burst of speed from these things. Uh, these these chickadee landing engines, which are actually there as a um, part of the launch escape system. So they can they'll give this thing a pretty good kick because that's what they're built for. Um, but I think we're good. We're good. Okay, landing gear down. It is wonky. I can tell the center of mass is up high. Like it's 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 it it likes to roll side to side a lot. Is uh you know sometimes you actually can get the center of lift above the center of mass. Here I should stop. I'm okay. Um, and that creates kind of a pendulum effect. This is an upside down pendulum effect. In other words, it's really not stable laterally. But it's good enough. Hopefully. Okay. In for that final approach. Lots of electric charge. Speed, I think, is good. Okay, a little off. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay. Wasn't pretty. But everybody survived. <laughs> like I said, I'm never never ever using this again <laughs> recover into normal any landing you can walk away from right dusty dentred elibro and iroli why are tourists getting all the great names i'm sorry a libro really does sound like a comic book a villain or maybe a comic book hero i don't know nah villain villain for sure and this is the last sketchy one, at least in terms of electricity. I think the hinges will forever be sketchy. Um, change that to surface. Why do I not have target Kerbin's KSC? Descent has been entered, show trajectory. And now I don't have the, oh, prograde, prograde. Oh my gosh. Now I got my icons. <laughs> oh, that might have this really messed up. Target? Shoot, we are way, way overshooting, way undershooting, way, way overshooting. Way overshooting because I had that when I was on this descent profile, I had it selected for retrograde entry instead of prograde entry. Oh boy, oh boy. So we are way overshooting. Actually, here, I know an idea. I know. Retrograde right now. And stage. There we go. Boom. Okay, now, prograde again. Did that help at all? I'm not sure I accomplished anything with that. 
Okay, here we go. Full belly flop mode. We got to stall this plane. I think I've used up all the monopropellant on here, didn't I? I did. I thought these things were on a different fuel. They're not. Okay. I might not have been smart. I might have been better off just firing off the orbital engines rather than the abort engines, but oh well. This might end up in the water because of that mess up with trajectories. Okay, so I'm still, I'm overshooting by about 75 kilometers right now, but it is coming down. Come on, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Now that I'm understanding a bit more about what these numbers are doing for me. I wonder if the little green icon is just set to whatever it is you set for that descent trajectory. It's set to these things here. As opposed to recommending what you should do. It's just saying this is what you said you want to do. Okay, we are closing in to about a 50 kilometer overshoot. I'm kind of impressed this thing is still holding this. Oh, might still be able to pull this out. We'll see. I'm amazed that this thing is holding this attitude. I thought for sure we would... The center of mass and the center of lift must be very close to you. Okay, now it's starting to pitch forward. But we have done a good job stalling it. Let's spin this around this way, right down. This is like the worst carnival ride ever. <laughs> Just going straight down on the roller coaster. Now this thing, notice how the wings are up rather than down low. And so this thing actually should be more stable. Whoop, here we go. This thing should be more stable. No, this green thing's definitely not. It's recommending something, not telling me to do something. It's definitely making a recommendation, not what I had entered, I meant. But anyway, what was I saying? Yes, with these up like this, the center of lift should be very high and it should be above the center of mass, which means I should have more stability than that previous one because of a pendulum bob effect, right? The mass is down low, so like a pendulum bob, it's going to want to kind of stay laterally stable. We'll see. That's in theory. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Pretty happy, pretty happy, pretty happy. Gear down. Yeah, I think this red one must be like your target, and the green one is the suggested attitude for your craft. But I know I need to keep my speed up, so I gotta be a little careful. If you stall this thing, it falls. So it's a pretty decent glider. Alright. Lots and lots and lots of electricity. But and this is the last one with potential electricity problems. The other ones have more electrical storage and all that stuff is happy, happy. Okay, okay. Gotta concentrate, concentrate, concentrate. 400 meters from the surface. Good job. Yeah, it's definitely more stable. Definitely, come on. Whoa, whoa, actually got a little bit of upsy there. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> oh, whatever. Whatever. I care so little. As long as they survive, I'm happy. All right. Uh, it's 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 on the runway ish. <laughs> All right. One more. One more, and that's it. Actually, let's do the Maxwell Six first, because it's only forty minutes away, and then we'll uh, we'll deal with our last descent. And while we get ready to perform this capture burn, I'd like to welcome aboard our newest patron, Legee. 
I hope I am pronouncing that right, but either way, thank you, Le Guy. Your support is greatly appreciated, as is the support of all of my patrons. And if you would like to support this channel, well, number one, subscribe. If you're at this point in this video, clearly you're enjoying this series. If you've not subscribed, subscribe! Push the button! Push the button right now! But if you want to take that extra step, go down into the description. You'll find a link to my Patreon page. Otherwise, this guy is pretty much ready to go. There we are. It's the X-Men script, of course, that is performing this burn. And this will only take a little bit, a few seconds longer. Again, this is just a transfer vehicle. Here's the main probe here. We'll detach. This will deorbit into Mimis in just a moment, as long as this orbits okay. I'm perfectly happy, happy with that. Let's get rid of the node. Program has ended. Let's stage. But this isn't what we're here for. Let's get that last crew of students down. Nose away from the station here just a little bit. So we should have Valentina, Gwenny, Agony, Mitpont, and New Gun. And then back on the station, let's make sure I got this right. There's only five Kerbals back on the station. Lagerfurt. Kerberi and Hades are for my moon mission. Kamsi's our mission specialist, and Bob is going to have to just kind of man the fort. We'll have to send some more people up here with Bob once we get some pilots back again. Um, yeah, when, when our moon mission is just going to be Bob and Kamsi up here, uh, no pilots left, but oh well, oh well, <laughs> that's okay. Oh! We just ran out of fuel. We are out of monopropel. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, okay. So it's not going to go perfectly, but uh, we're okay. We're okay. We're on a descent. I can see we're overshooting a little bit, so we're going to have to be a little, little aggressive. Next time, check how much monopropellant you have before you leave the station. We're overshooting by 150 kilometers. Well, we do have Valentina aboard, one of our more veteran pilots. So, if anyone's going to be able to put this down on the runway, it's going to be Valentina. Alright, Val, let's, let's pull out of this dive, get around to the runway, come on. Oh, we're still very high. I don't know if we're going to have the legs. Where's the... Oh my gosh, okay, I'm changing my mind. I am changing my mind. I don't think we have the legs to get to this runway, the KSC runway, but there's the airport runway right there. Can we bring her around to that? Valentina can do it. I really got to design it. This one's got the inverse pendulum bob effect happening because even though this is the one that Jed flew up earlier this episode, and even in the fairly brief amount of time, I think it's every time it renders, it, it gets these hinges get screwed up. Even in that brief amount of time, notice how the hinges have moved downwards. Oh, I'm not convinced we're going to make it, though. I am not convinced we're going to make it. i got to keep that speed up, because we got to make a turn, too. No, I think we might... Oh, we're just going to come short, unfortunately. It really kind of looks that way. I mean, my speed is just a little over 100. Um, we're coming short. Okay, we're coming short, so it's going to be a water ditch. Sorry, with three out of four on the runway, sort of. <laughs> there we are. I mean, a safe landing. There we go. Okay. Um. No, I'm I'm done with it. I I think I'm going to redesign these and come up with a fixed. Winged. I was about to recover it into the space plane hangar, stick a booster on it, but you know what? I think I'm going to take this, keep it much the same, but see if we can fix the wings on. Get rid of these hinges altogether. As fun as the hinges are, I don't think they're worth the, worth the misery that they bring. <laughs> I do have a message. Contract complete. Hold a space camp. This was a great success. You've got a new pilot. Gwenny is now a pilot. Engineer Mitpont and scientist new gun new gun awesome sauce he was one of my favorites <laughs> they are ready for future missions i am so excited so all of that did get me three new kerbals uh that's not a high graduation rate but i'll take it all right excellent 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, I think we will be designing that uh, that puff, make a puff mark too, without the variable geometry with fixed wings instead of variable hingy wings. But you know, that's all going to have to be for the future. But for now, I'm going to thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time. Thank you.